In the words of stock sage Bob Dylan, go away from my IPO window. Leave at your own chosen speed. Okay, maybe he didn't mention the word IPO. And maybe the next line of, it ain't me, babe, needs to be reversed. You aren't the one I want, babe. You aren't the one I need. I keep thinking of these lyrics because we're getting in the point in the IPO cycle where we seriously do not want more companies to come public. Either the bankers are fooling us or they're fooling themselves. Either way, they're trying to sell some real garbage just to rack up more fees. All year, I've been warning you that this moment will come, that there will be a wave of IPOs that could be the biggest risk to the market because of all this new stock supply. And supply can destroy any stock market, especially if it's a supply of bad new stocks that nobody wants and nobody needs. The valuations for some of these deals are fanciful, even if they suckered the last round of private investors, too. Was something like WeWork ever really worth $47 billion? Well, SoftBank's Masayoshi-san put in billions at that level. In other words, even though uh, WeWork's run by a truly suboptimal CEO, Adam Newman, and it's a long way from profitable, it seems like SoftBank itself lifted the value of the company by investing in higher prices. It would be like walking up a stock and then blowing it out at an artificial level. Bag them, gut them, and liquidate them. BGL! Except Newman was so busy self-destructing, it didn't work. Hence, these incredible stories we're seeing now that WeWork IPO has been postponed. SoftBank wants to get rid of Newman and bring in someone more reliable to get the valuation back on track. Of course, the whole thing's a sideshow. During this period, we've learned of massive self-dealing by Newman, not to mention huge losses in a stock that seems like it's tailor-made for short sellers to use as a proxy for falling real estate prices around the country. Because in the end, WeWork is, sadly or not sadly, just a real estate firm. We've seen this movie before. Who knows how something like Uber really got to a $68 billion valuation in that last private round? Sure seems like it was fueled by what I call the greater fool theory, with investors who put in money simply because they were salivating about a potential $120 billion valuation when Uber only came public. Google it. That's what they were looking at. Of course, the company's now worth $55 billion, and that number's shrinking rapidly as people finally realize that Uber is a glorified cab company that's losing money. I think it's only going to get worse. Ten drones took out half of Saudi Aramco's oil production. But now the investment bankers are lined up for what could be the first trillion-dollar IPO. Now, Saudi Aramco is incredibly profitable, so it's not quite the same as Uber or WeWork. But it's also a lot more vulnerable to geopolitical tensions than anyone realized. Honestly, if you were deliberately trying to design an IPO that could sop up money and really hurt this market, I don't think you could do much better than a Saudi Aramco. It's a fossil fuel. Ugh behemoth, okay, in a market that hates even the best fossil fuel names and annihilates the worst on a daily basis. I wish this IPO would just go away from the window or that the window would finally shut. But when nine banks line up to do a deal, you better believe they'll get it done by hook or by crook. It's not just the big ones. The small ones are starting to smell, too. Look at Peloton, which at the end of the day is merely an exercycle with a twist. Look at the delusional investors who put $225 million into Postmates at a $2.4 billion valuation. That's all we need, another money-losing delivery company. As far as I'm concerned, the IPO market has become a travesty of a mockery of a sham, and it was so predictable. I've been railing against this for months. Nobody listened. Now it's here, and I think it could do some real damage to the stock market, at least until these deals become so damaging that the investment bankers and their venture, venture capital clients finally throw in the darn towel. Won't that be terrific? Mike in California. Mike, Mike, Mike. Jim, a thousand booyahs from the Golden State. I like that number. Thank you. Excellent. Hey, I want to talk Silk Road Medical since we last talked. It's been about five months since their IPO. They've got a new approach for treating carotid artery disease and stroke prevention. They had a blowout earnings report. But the stock has been drifting downward of late. What say you? And well, what do you, see uh, you know, I like Silk forward? Road. You know, I like Silk Road. But this is the kind of stock that this market no longer likes. It, it wants earnings and dividends and buybacks. And this stock is the opposite. It just has to do with the Wall Street fashion show that I always talk about. How about Paul in California, Paul? Booyah, Daddy. Mm-hmm. What's Thank up? Thank you for taking my call. Uh, I never miss your show and love your advice and your stuff. Thank you. The stock I'm calling today is about uh, is Sonos. They produce high-end smart speakers. And right. I'd like to know, do you think Sonos can become Roku of audio streaming services? No, one I day? do not. I, I, Roku is about, about uh, cord cut. This is a, an interesting home entertainment system. I, I have it. The Sonos people say, are you kidding me, Jim? We're so much more than that. I say, okay, are you kidding me? You say you're so much more than that. I mean, you know, boy, am I ever tired of people saying, I don't know what I'm talking about, and you were so much more than that. Because, man, I'm, well, never mind. You get the truth. All right, 
We're in an IPO market, Travis. Stocks we don't need are hurting this market. I think we should have a strike against them. I'm not kidding, because it's only going to get worse. Let's go on strike together. Don't let us, don't let them give us any more of this merchandise. Much more mad money head. Oil stabilized a bit today, but what does it mean for the overall market? I'm going to talk with man who knows. The Nutanix is down nearly 40% year to date. Red flag, buying opportunity, back to CEO. And all your calls are rapid fire in tonight's edition of the Lightning Round. And you know what? Nancy Reagan, just say no to the next IPO. Stick and crazy. Tomorrow, kick off the trading day with Squawk on the Street. Live from Post 9 at the NYSE. That's a big flaw in the story, other than the fact that the guy is a complete crazy man lunatic. <laughs> you, what? Well, when you say, remember, David, there's a podcast and there's where you can't make takes, this gesture. Takes one to know one. Yeah, yes. Well, you <laughs> bet it does. It all starts at 9 a.m. Eastern. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.